In this video, I would like to cover some of the top questions people ask on the internet about red-breasted nuthatches, which include what do they eat, how can you attract them, where do they nest, and do they migrate? Here are the answers to these questions. Enjoy! The diet of red-breasted nuthatches will change with the seasons. Like a similar bird, the chickadee, these guys eat mostly insects, such as moths, caterpillars, wasps, beetles, and insect eggs. Spiders are on the menu too. During the breeding season, a nuthatch's diet may consist of as much as 65% beetles, with 40% of them being weevils, a type of beetle that can be destructive to over 100 species of plants. The other 25% is usually leaf beetles. Insects are found by climbing up, down, around, and even upside down on trees and limbs as they search crevices of trees and undersides of branches. Flycatching is another method they occasionally use. And they will even, pretty rarely, search for food on the ground. Just as the adult birds mostly eat arthropods, so too do the nestlings, which are fed various species of insects and spiders from their parents during their time in the nest, as well as for the first month after fledging. Sometimes when there is an outbreak of spruce budworm, which eat the needles and buds of conifers, causing much damage to northern and western forests, red-breasted nuthatches can help fight against this process since spruce budworm is on their menu. However, if the outbreak is too large, red-breasted nuthatches alone may not have as much effect. As winter nears, the days become shorter, colder, and with not much insects around anymore, they switch to eating the seeds of native trees, those found in the cones of pine, spruce, fir, and other conifers. Evergreen trees are a nuthatch favorite for their seeds. Native nuts like acorns and beech nut are also consumed. Although winter means insects aren't as plentiful, red-breasted nuthatches can still find bark beetles in the bark of trees. These little guys will also eat at feeders, which brings me to the next question. How can you attract them to your yard? If you are in their location and you want to have these energetic and feisty little birds as guests in your yard, setting up a suet feeder may help to attract them in winter, especially natural nut suet cakes or suet logs. Black oil sunflower seeds in a tray or hopper feeder is a good choice too, and you can never go wrong with unsalted peanuts out of the shell. Red-breasted nuthatches love peanuts. A good way to offer these peanuts is on a tray, hopper, or in a mesh peanut feeder. They will cling onto the mesh while pecking at the nuts until it can fit through and be pulled out. Stackables and cylinders with nuts is a good choice as well. Another thing I've seen other people doing but I haven't tried myself yet is to smear some natural peanut butter on the limb of a tree. Lastly, mealworms can be offered as well, another great food that they enjoy. Many people use dried mealworms, which you can even add to suet cakes if you make your own. I should mention though that red-breasted nuthatches are not like chickadees or pine siskins. Don't expect to see many at your feeder at once. It's more likely that you'll attract one or two, but not many more than that. Which to me just makes it that much more exciting because you never know if you'll be successful with attracting one, but when you do, it will feel well earned. And they are total characters, very fun to watch. If you are lucky enough to be in their breeding range, there is a slight chance a pair will nest in your yard if there are trees with abandoned woodpecker nest holes. And if you are very lucky, a pair may use a nest box if the entrance hole and overall birdhouse dimensions are favorable. This is very rare though. They are not as likely as other birds to use nest boxes. You'd probably have more luck attracting one if you have older trees and hollow snags around. Red-breasted nuthatches also prefer aspen trees for nesting, so if you have them in your yard, you never know, maybe you'll score getting a pair. 
And how exciting would that be, watching the secretive, intimate life of nesting? And since we are on the topic of nesting, here's the next top searched question. Where do they nest? Red-breasted nuthatches are tree cavity nest builders. They nest inside trees. A pair will usually choose a soft, rotted part of a conifer with the top missing, or an aspen tree, which is apparently their favorite due to the wood being softer than that of conifer trees and thus easier to dig out. Like woodpeckers, red-breasted nuthatches excavate their own nests, roughly 5 to 40 feet high. It takes around a few weeks to complete, with the cavity being 2.5 and 8 inches deep. One of the most well-known things about these birds is the fact that after the female has finished building a nest inside the cavity, they will apply tree resin to the outside and inside entrance. This is done to deter insects and possibly predators like squirrels. They really pack on the resin, but over the course of nesting, rain and humidity will reduce the amount. This means that nuthatches have to reapply it periodically until the babies are ready to fledge. I've always checked small cavity holes like this for resin to know whether a pair is nesting in there or not. It can be a good indicator. So if you see tree resin like this around a hole in a tree during nesting season from May to August, well, you may very well have found yourself a lovely little red-breasted nuthatch pair in the middle of raising a brood. If you stay back and watch for a little bit, shouldn't have to wait much longer than 15 minutes, you will either see a male coming to feed his mate while she incubates the eggs, or if the eggs have hatched, you should see both parents coming and going with food for the nestlings. And lastly, do they migrate? It all depends really. For some populations, they are resident, which seems to be the case for the ones in my area from what I can tell. According to Cornell Lab of Ornithology, northernmost populations appear to migrate south each year. The populations of other areas seem to be resident during most years, but in some years eruptive movements may occur. This all comes down to how good comb production was. Years when comb production is low on their breeding grounds, these otherwise resident birds leave moving southward in vast numbers. A cyclic event that tends to occur roughly every two to four years depending. And in some years, red-breasted nuthatches show up as far south as the Gulf Coast, way out of their range. Long-term observations at Long Point Bird Observatory in Ontario, Canada corroborate patterns observed at other locations with eruptions occurring randomly throughout the years 1961 to 1987. Because numbers of birds that remain resident or move south vary considerably from year to year, it's difficult to predict the number of birds that will remain resident or winter in any given location. This year is an eruptive one for them. Red-breasted nuthatches started heading south back in mid-August. Cone crops haven't been good in the eastern boreal forest, causing them to leave in search of food. Individuals have made it as far as Oklahoma and Alabama. Given that these little guys are short distant migrants who prefer the colder northern climate, seeing them travel so far reveals this sudden influx is not only a classic example of major food supply related to eruption, but it's also occurring unusually early in the year. For those of you with bird feeders at home, this is great news. Perhaps your feeders will be where one of these darlings will go. I'm curious to know how many of my American friends, especially in the more southern areas, have seen red-breasted nuthatches this year. Comment below, I'd love to know. So there's a few of the most searched questions on the red-breasted nuthatch answered. Was any of these questions something you've wondered? Also I thought I should ask if you have future video idea that you would like to see. I hope you'll take the time and leave it in the comments below and as always thanks for watching, take care. Happy birding!